what's one thing you learned making Rosetta that um, you'll take with you to the next film or, or do massively different? We're competing for audiences. How much do that affect, uh, does that affect our craft, our industry? We are competing for audiences. That, like, that inherently like, comes into the process of filmmaking and then it like, fucks it over, really, like, because people are not watching films. Uh, so we are actually literally competing for audiences, right? So you have to show something different or something. Uh, I don't know, like, uh, I went to school and um, I feel before I going to school, I have like a, in my, in my house, my only power tool is a screwdriver, right? And I know how to fix everything with that, you know? And, and if my chair is broken and I fix it with that, then if I can sit back on the chair, that means I, it worked. If not, I'll have to find somewhere else to sit. But then I feel like I go and I get like this humongous uh, toolbox set. And, and then I have many specific tools that I don't know how to work, you know, and, and, and it just makes me anxious, like how, like, should I be conscious about this one? I, I've never used this, I should, I, but I got it, I should, I should use it, you know, and then you end up like doing something or wanting to fix your house when it doesn't need fixed, or, or I don't know, you know what I'm saying. We keep getting the feedback, like the movie's great, it just, we can't sell the movie because there's no known talent. So it's like, that's something, that's the one thing we talk about a lot about moving forward is like making sure we get somebody known. And quite honestly, if you have a good script, you know, these companies and casting directors offer, like if you, for instance, these people aren't gonna audition for you at the level of an indie, an indie film. But SAG has it set up also where, you know, they'll get paid a certain amount every day. If they really like a script, you can call their agent and say, hey, I want them to read the script. And the agent will say to you like, oh, well, I'll have them read the script as long as you sign this pay or play deal, which actually turns out to be like, listen, if they say yes, if they take the time to read the script and they say yes to agree for SAG wages for the day, that no matter what happens to your movie, these guys will get paid if you need them for 10 days, you know, that they get paid their 10 days rate no matter what happens. So it's kind of like that also weeds out the people that just want to know if they would do their script if they could raise money because you're not going to approach them until you have the money essentially. So we learned a lot about that and that's not the worst thing in the world. It kind of protects everybody. But you can get huge people if you can condense their days into shooting to four days that will more than happy come out and do your movie, get paid and just go away. <laughs> Never see them again. But we realize that it's not as hard to get talent in a movie as you may think it is. They want to do independent movies, and there's a lot of great actors that are not working <laughs> all the time. So that's something we learned, you know, also. And although I do like the idea of putting unknowns in the movie all the time, I also do want to make money. <laughs> and that's just the situation it is right now. One of the hardest things that you do making a small movie is crewing up and how you choose your team. Uh, you have the choice between hiring, uh, hiring a bunch of people for every position. You have to make those choices. You know, who's on your team, who's not on your team. And I, I feel like I was, I was incredibly satisfied with my crew with only a few very small exceptions. And the people who were exceptions were people who I hired uh, out of out of uh, out of a desperation to fill the position in time, uh, whereas the majority of people I was able to hire because they expressed a passion for what they do and for the craft of filmmaking, and uh, I I feel like if if you're if you're hiring someone because you gotta hire someone not because they really make you feel good and they challenge you and they inspire you, then odds are they're not going to suddenly start challenging and inspiring you on set. I used to belong to the camp of not identifying as a female filmmaker and being frustrated when I'd be at a film festival and I'd be in a program of female directors um, or like, this is a block of women's films. I found it demeaning or pigeonholing or, okay, you're not you know, a real filmmaker, you're just a female filmmaker. And you know, an award for female film, like best female director always kind of felt like second place. 
Um, so I, I definitely had that mentality for a long time. And that's actually shifted because I think that is a luxury to be able to have that mentality. Like that mentality works if we're in an equal world where there are 50% male and female filmmakers. But because we're not, and because, and the more I've learned about the statistics and how abysmal they are, and it's 5% of directors in Hollywood are women and 15% in the independent world, it's nowhere near 50%. Until we get to that point, I think it's empowering to identify as a female filmmaker. And I think you can like flip that on its head and say, I'm a female filmmaker. I am one of the you know, only women here in the room. Um, but there are other female filmmakers out there and a lot more than people realize. And let's join together and help each other and support each other and like all lift each other up. I, I think that I, I can say that um, I hope that I never kid myself into thinking I, I have it figured out. You know, there's all, I'm, 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 every one of these things I ever do is you, you, you know, you're going to come into them as a total novice. And if you can embrace that, then you'll have fun and learn something and you won't, you won't bullshit people. You know?